right guys, so we just pulled up at a new customer's house. She's got the staircase down for us. I saw, a, I see an ICP right there, but on, that's not her, on her house. She looks like she has a Goodman. So let's go see if uh, maybe she'll, she won't helicopter us and we can get some film. Nice little Arco Air ICP at the neighbors. Okay, so this is off. She's got the thermostat on off, but the fan inside is still running. But it's it's almost 100 degrees in the house. I'm thinking that she's got an, a locked on heat strip in the air handler, because even with the stat off, she is still getting fan and she's getting hot air, like not just room temperature air. I'm talking about like hot air. So for stuff like this, I bring the whole tool bag up. I used to bring. I'm like Ted when I'm at a condenser. I usually just bring my three tools. But when I'm coming in an attic to do this kind of stuff, I may need steak hons or whatever. So I just bring the whole damn bag with me. Save me a trip. And plus I'm much lighter now. So it's easy for me to tote the whole bag around plus my weight. It is a Goodman Air Handler. So it's probably gonna be that little relay board that's bad. And uh, I've got a couple of them on the truck. So we're gonna put the tool bag up here. I'm gonna get situated and we'll get y'all some shots. If you look here, we have 21 amps, so we do have a locked on heat strip. Uh, it's going to be the one at the very top there. That's coming straight from the breaker. Now, where does it get? Okay, it comes from that sequencer there, but I really don't think the sequencer is the issue. I think if we pull this purple wire right here. Ooh, that wire is fucking hot. Pardon my French. see well there was some smoke coming out of the relay so that blower board is no good uh let me make sure that our power is dead because i've made that mistake before check everything the ground oh wait no no, no i'm sorry i gotta check the back side nothing there nothing there nothing there nothing there okay so the power is dead we most definitely have a bad blower relay board here. They're using low speed. I have to see what ton the condenser is before I make a decision on uh, what speed I'm going to use. Okay, so this is my normally open and this is my normally closed. Okay. And then I got two reds. From the one's from the transformer, the other one is from the field connection, and then the common two commons actually. One is a transformer common, one's a regular common, and the other one's just a G for the fan. And it wants to pull the whole damn thing out. Cause this is a three, hope you guys were able to see anything I was doing. I just ripped all those wires out of there. I got the board empty. Uh, this is a three to three and a half ton air handler. So if it's a three ton air handler, I don't like to leave them on low speed. I'll probably go with medium, but that's what they had it on was low. I'll go to medium speed. If it's a 
three and a half ton air handler, I'll go to high speed, but I don't think it's a three and a half ton air handler, to be honest with you. I mean, uh, condenser, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm just gonna pull the whole thing. Okay. So. The back of the board doesn't really look burnt, but I saw smoke coming out of that relay. I've got plenty of those on the truck. Turn this back around. Pull these two out. And I'll just... Because two, two of them broke anyway. And I'll just stick the new ones in there and wire it back up and we should be good. And I'll try to prop you guys up like that when I, uh, when I wire up the new board. Yeah. I'll be back. Okay. So I have the new board here. Again, these are these are very cheap. So I keep like two or three on the truck. It just makes everything plug and play. Now in a pinch, on a weekend, when I haven't had one of these, I've used the Honeywell, that brown, what is it, the 97, oh, I can't remember the part number, 9730 or something like that. I've used that to replace this board. But, I like to try to stay OEM. This thing's got a time delay built into it and all that. And again, they are so cheap at good, at well, we have Johnstone now, thank God. I keep about two or three of these on my truck, so it's not a problem. And it'll fit just like so, well. It's supposed to. Yeah, I can smell the smoke from that other one. There it is. Now she's in there. Okay. So red from the transformer goes to X former, which is transformer. And then red from the field connection goes to regular R. And then we have common from the tra from the transformer, which will go to X former C. And oh wait, almost made a big mistake. That's high voltage right here. That's the high voltage side of the transformer. Who that would not have been good. So this is the low voltage red that goes to X former red. There we go. That's better. And then we have a regular common right here, coming from the field connection. Okay, and then we have a green that goes here. This red high voltage goes to normally closed. I forgot to go look at the condenser, but I'm gonna go with medium speed. I don't like low speed. And that'll go to common. And then we'll put black and red on M1 and M2, which are park terminals. There's nothing there. <clears throat> Some boards will actually say park. Some say M1 or M2, they're park terminals. And we have one more wire to hook up, which is this purple that comes from the sequencer. If I can find it, I have lost track of it. Where did you go? Oh, did I do? Yep, I messed up. This is purple. That's why you always want to be careful and double check your work, guys. This is the red from the field connection. Okay. And this is definitely purple, which goes to normally open. 
Now, guys, my iPhone got overheated up here in the attic, and uh, I could so it cut off. So we have low voltage here, red from the transformer, red from the field connection, common from the transformer, common from the field connection, green from the field connection. That's all low voltage. On the high voltage side, we have our blower relay. We're using medium speed on our common. This purple wire comes from the sequencer on normally closed. That way, if the heat comes, if one of those sequencers sticks, it'll throw the fan on. And then this red wire goes to normally open from the breaker up here. That way, when, uh, when there is a call for fan, it'll let voltage pack, this relay will close and voltage will pass from the red wire to the blue wire on common and let the fan come on, which I just jumped out. So I'm gonna put the door back on, go to the thermostat, check all the functions and we'll check her Freon and stuff because this is a good one. And you can see the coil's been replaced and it's aluminum and it's already not looking that good. So we are gonna check her Freon and stuff and uh, go through everything for her. All right, guys. It's R22, it is a three ton. I put it on medium speed, I'm okay with that. And I'm okay with these pressures too. 884 PSI on suction, it's literally 95 degrees in the house because she's had 5 kW worth of heat running nonstop. I'll try to get you guys a shot of the thermostat. 35 degrees of superheat is high, but not for that kind of indoor temperature. Matter of fact, we are going to take this wet bulb thermometer and uh, I will do a uh, screen record and show you guys what the target superheat is supposed to be with these extreme indoor temperatures. Because I've had guys say, man, you left that thing at 30 something degrees of superheat, you left that thing undercharged. No, I promise you, this unit's not undercharged. It's just hot as hell in that house. So let's go see what our temperatures are. All right, I couldn't talk inside, but it dropped it from 95 to 94, 93 degree dry bulb. So now we're gonna calculate these pressures and see what our target superheat's supposed to be. So as you guys saw there in the little screen record video, we're not under we're not undercharged. Our recommended superheat is 29 red 33, so we're four degrees off of that. We have a tolerance of five. I'm not touching that charge because as it cools off in the house, that suction pressure will come down, the superheat will come down, same thing will happen, the head pressure will come down, everything will settle out. The coil looks a little dirty so I'm gonna probably go ahead and yep she's got a spigot right over there and I've got a water hose 
I'm going to unhook the gauges, put them away, put the tools away, and I'm going to rinse this thing off, and she'll be good to go. All right, guys, so I didn't get to get much film when I got to the condenser uh, because my iPhone was overheated, and uh, it, went out, it went off on temperature while we were in the attic doing that board. Um, so I didn't get to get much film outside, but I did show y'all that the charge was good. I her condenser just had a little surface dirt on it, but I went ahead and hooked up the water hose and, uh, and sprayed it off with just some straight water. Let me get my address put in here. All right. So, uh, let me turn that. All right, I'll mute that. So, um, didn't get to get much film outside, but I did wash the dirt off the canal. Like I said, it was surface dust, wasn't clogged, but I sprayed it off. Freon charge looked good. I did a screen record on my iPhone of me calculating the target superheat. I need to put these babies in action. I just bought two of these from True Tech Tools. They Bluetooth to my S-Man manifold. Uh, I need to get them set up and all that. But um, you gotta stay hydrated, fellas. Because it's as hot as it is out here. So that was interesting. I see that quite a bit. Those boards, you know, they tr they tricked me. When I first when they first came out, and I was still a younger tech, I would go out there and find 5kW worth of heat locked on, and you'd be like, "Oh well, okay, this is the one that's on, so it's this sequencer's got to be stuck." Change out the sequencers, doing the same thing. But actually, what happens is that relay goes bad on those boards, and it backfeeds and throws 5kw worth of freaking heat on so it's a very common problem and the way that you can determine that is the purple wire that's on normally closed in case the sequencer does lock you pull it off the relay and if if your heat strips if your heat strip goes away that's your problem if your heat strip doesn't go away then you got a sequencer on. But when I pulled that purple wire off, the fan shut down and the and the uh, the 5kW worth the heat went away. The minute I touched it back, came back on. So those those boards are pretty notorious for that. Now I know a lot of people say, oh, why'd you put a board on there? You could have replaced it with a oh what what are they a 93 a not a 9370 relay the little brown double pole double throw i can never remember the part number on that thing i've done that several times guys but i like to keep things oem those little boards they're cheap they're like 20 something bucks at johnstone or goodman which we have a johnstone now so i don't deal with goodman anymore but um i just like to keep things oem but if I wouldn't have had that board, I would have put the brown double pole, double throw relay. Basically, we, we, we would have just eliminated all the low voltage wires. We would have put common and G on the coil, and we could have got rid of the red and the commons, and we would have put, you know, the hot wire coming from the breaker on normally, on normally open, and then put the fan in between normally open, and then when the relay closed, it throws the fan on. And then we'd have put the purple wire from the sequencer on normally closed in case the sequencer would have locked, it would throw the fan on. Uh, but with, with the blower relay, with the brown relay, all you need is a common from the transformer and then your green wire. The common coming from the field connection is no longer needed. You don't need the hot one coming or none of that anymore. So you can eliminate some of those wires when you do it that way. But, you know, I like to keep it OEM. They're like 20 bucks. I keep two or three of them on the truck. Now that I know that I used one, next time I go to Johnstone, I'll pick up another one and replace it. But 
just the kind of guy I am. I mean, condenser fan motors. I don't stock them. On, I mean, I stock one 1075 multi horsepower on the truck and one 825, and I stock one 208 230 volt blower motor and one 115 volt for gas furnaces, both of them multi horsepower, just to get me out of a pinch. Because if you know, now, or if I'm way out in the country, but if I'm in town and the supply houses are not far and the unit's in good shape. Now, if it's a now if it's a unit, it's you know it's all in bad shape. It's you know the people didn't have maintenance done on it. It's falling apart. I'm not gonna go OEM that. But if it's a nice looking system, I don't care if it's 10, 11, 12, 13 years old. If it's a nice looking system and they want to repair it, and it was taken care of, I'm going to get the OEM stuff. To me, it, they work better with OEM, especially with fan motors. So that's just how I am. I've said that before on several videos and several live streams. So anyway, I'm rambling on. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys are enjoying the live streams with the live phone calls. I want to remind you guys about my two Facebook groups. Number one is HVAC Brotherhood. I'll put a picture up of what that looks like. Anybody in the world can request to join as long as you do HVAC for a living. Answer both security questions or I'm not letting you in. Let me repeat that. Answer both security questions or I'm not letting you in. And then I have my new HVAC Facebook group. It's called Louisiana HVAC Tech Talk. Here's a picture of it. You, ha you have to work in it. Now, to be in this group, you got to meet two criteria. You got to work in HVAC, obviously, and you have to live and work HVAC in Louisiana. You can't be from Louisiana and live somewhere else and do it now. You have to live here and do HVAC for a living. Answer both security questions or I'm not letting you in. So don't forget about those Facebook groups. Join up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you know when I'm gonna be doing a live stream. I'll type a post letting you know when I'm going live uh, to do a live stream with the live phone calls and smash that like button and don't forget to uh, share the video with your friends if you enjoy. So until the next one, thanks for watching, and we'll see y'all on the next one.